This feature presentation is brought to you by Colgate Lasagna, food that'll leave your mouth minty fresh. Now available in optic white and charcoal. Man, what a stupid product. How's it going guys? My name is Lewis and welcome back to the Discontinued Food and Snacks Iceberg. Now last time we checked on mostly nostalgic snacks that many of you really fondly remember and I'm honestly glad a lot of people watched it. It's like seriously, this was like my best performing video so thanks a lot guys, appreciate it. In this part, we'll still be covering nostalgic snacks but we'll also be showcasing you the worst of the worst. Items so bad that it'll leave your head scratching. Like seriously, what is this? So yeah, if you haven't seen part one, go check that out. Uh, without further ado, this is part two of the Discontinued Food and Snacks Iceberg. Defy gravity with Orbit's soda, the drink with balls. Orbit's, the drink with balls. Their words, not mine. The story of Orbit's is a tale about everything that went wrong for this product while in the market. In 1996, the Clearly Food and Beverage Company, the same people behind Clearly Canadian, test marketed a fruit flavored carbonated drink that included these low dense gelatinous balls, which allowed them to stay suspended in the liquid, often giving people the idea of it looking like a drinkable lava lamp, which really gave it a really cool and unique design. But that's like the only compliment I'm giving it. This texturally enhanced alternative beverage, again, their words, not mine, would be released the following year in four flavors, orange vanilla, raspberry citrus, blueberry melon, strawberry, and pineapple banana cherry coconut. Th that, that is just a mouthful of words right there. Another flavor, black currant berry, would release a few months later in 1998. It did mention that there was a Charlie Brown chocolate flavor, but I really couldn't find evidence of that even existing. Upon release, many people gave this drink unfavorable reviews, claiming that it was mediocre for the most part, with the water tasting like cough syrup or flower water, including one user describing the gelatinous balls as blobs bursting in your teeth like some twisted boil full of sugary pus. Ugh. While sales were good for its initial year, it was mostly due to interest of the product rather than it being good. Soon sales would nosedive until it was discontinued in 1998. While the drink has faded into obscurity, today unopened bottles of Orbitz would go on sale for $30 a bottle. Surprisingly enough, the balls are also still floating and intact after 20 plus years. Chew up a storm with Gator Gum. No drought about it. Gator Gum. During the late 60s to early 80s, Gatorade only had two products, orange and lemon-lime Gatorade. It wasn't until 1983 when they added fruit punch to their mix, you know, huge deal at the time. But prior to that, in the late 70s, Gatorade, along with the Fleer Corporation, teamed together to launch Gator Gum, a chewing gum marketed to dry combat mouth and provide a quick hit of hydration to the mouth. The gum was available in two flavors, that being the original lemon-lime and orange with a fruit punch and grape variety coming later. The gum was super popular amongst athletes and kids, as many said that it had a great lasting taste. On the contrary, people over on Reddit said that it was dry and hard to chew on, so I don't know, you be the judge of that. Sadly, by 1989, the manufacturing contract between Fleer and Gatorade had expired, and with Gatorade now being owned by the Quaker Oats company at the time, perhaps they had no interest to continue producing Gator Gum. While Gator Gum ceased production in 1989, some have claimed that the item was still found as late as the early 2000s. My theory is maybe they just had a warehouse full of it and it just lasted an entire decade. Who knows? You'll never see his family again. I guess that's pretty awesome. Excuse me. Touch the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! In 2013, Skittles decided to choose violence and war when they decided to make Skittles 20% less original when they had replaced the lime Skittle with a green apple Skittle. The reason for this change is actually quite similar to that of New Coke, and that was simply due to green apple outperforming lime in taste tests. This upset many fans of the real original flavor, as now you couldn't make a lemon-lime combination. However, this didn't upset many fans, as some did welcome the new combination, as green apple is something different compared to lime, which is similar to lemon. Yet by 2021, Skittles would announce that they would put the lime Skittles back in the bags, to which made several fans happy, yet simultaneously angered the new fans of the green apple Skittle, which is honestly really poetic. Toaster Breaks Pizza toast up hot and crispy with real mozzarella, zesty sauce, pepperoni or sausage. Want pizza from your toaster? Try Toaster Breaks. Think Pop-Tarts, but pizza. These were available in five flavors, but wouldn't last in store shelves for long. My guess is that these weren't as popular compared to regular Hot Pockets. Um, there's really not a lot of information regarding this, so I guess it's best to move on. 
fast food lovers can indulge in a bacon sundae. That's vanilla, soft serve with fudge, caramel, bacon crumbles topped off with a piece of bacon. The BK bacon sundae, as you can tell, is a vanilla soft serve with caramel, fudge, and lots of bacon. This item is one of several limited time items that were first test marketed in Nashville, Tennessee as part of a limited time summer menu where Burger King offered barbecue sandwiches such as pulled pork, a barbecue beef or chicken sandwich, sweet potato fries, frozen lemonade, and the legendary bacon sundae. And while it does look good, the sundae was a whopping 510 calories, 18 grams of fat, and 61 grams of sugar. Yet people who reviewed it claimed it to be a pretty solid dessert as the taste of smoked bacon in the ice cream really had a good taste to it. In my opinion, it just looks like overkill. I'd probably just avoid this. In the 1960s, a new wave of products was becoming popular in the US market. Diet Soda, a miracle product that promised weight loss while keeping your vices. Before Coke Zero, before Diet Coke, Coca-Cola had Tab. This was the diet soda that used saccharin and sodium cyclamate as their primary ingredient. Two ingredients which would later bring issues. According to some consumers, many said that it had a metallic taste, so I guess that must have implied that it was healthy or something. Overall, I think the most bizarre part of Tab's early history was its advertising, as it really pushed towards the idea of this being the solution for weight management to women. There's also this really weird commercial where this creepy dude is looking at a chick from a distance, like, <laughs> like what are you doing bro, you're old enough to be your dad. <laughs> However, a few years later, they would have their first controversy as in 1969, the FDA issued a ban on sodium cyclamate, one of the primary ingredients for TAB. Reasons being that studies showed that high volumes of this sweetener were linked to bladder cancer in lab rats. This caused the drink to be reformulated and half saccharin as the primary sweetener. Yet it would be hit by controversy yet again when the FDA cited health concerns regarding saccharin, which caused TAB to be covered in warning labels. Yet this would be repealed after a lack of plausible evidence was found. As the 70s and early 80s rolled around, TAB would become one of the most popular diet sodas around, yet its fate would be sealed when in 1982 Diet Coke would become the new flagship leader. TAB would eventually become an afterthought and lose relevancy, and by 2020, TAB, which had accumulated for just 0.1% of the market, would be discontinued in order to streamline operations during the COVID pandemic, along with other products such as Coke Life, Diet Coke Feisty Cherry, Zico, and several other products. Despite this drink being around for 60 years, many thought that the soda disappeared 30 years ago, which really comes to show how much the brand has fallen. Mm. Can you taste the fruit now? Oh yeah, definitely there it is. That's, that's some fruit right there. <laughs> Altoids sours. Man, I didn't even know this, but did you know that Altoids were invented all the way back in 1780? That is like 240 years old. Absolutely wild. Yet back in the 2000s, there was another Altoids product that lasted only a fraction of a percent of that span, and that was Altoids Sours. Rather than mints or sour minty candy, these were just sour candies with fruit flavors such as tangerine, raspberry, citrus, apple, and mango. And while these candies were small in size, they were described to have a huge tongue tingling sensation. So how did you like that? I like that one. I like it a lot. People love Altoid Sours. While these did have a dedicated following, especially to those of the tangerine flavor, these would unfortunately be discontinued in 2010 due to low sales. Give your kids a Wonka peel a pop and watch them unpeel a world of fun. Is it a banana? Is it a cheese stick? It's a peel a pop. These were banana shaped ice cream treats that had vanilla ice cream on the inside covered with a taffy like peel that could also be eaten. These were available in banana and grape. And yeah, reviews for this snack were kind of mixed. Some thought that the peels tasted bland and with the treat only being four inches in diameter, you really weren't getting much bang for your buck. By the late 2010s, they would be gone from store shelves. If it's square, it's fish. If it's round, it's a burger. New seafood salad from Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. Taco Bell and seafood, that doesn't sound like a recipe for disaster, don't it? Well, actually, yeah, it was, essentially causing them to never dabble with seafood ever. In 1986, Taco Bell had introduced the seafood salad, a Taco Bell which contained shrimp, snow crab, white fish, vegetables, cheese, and black olives. This product was really not popular amongst consumers as few reported cases of food poisoning from eating the taco salad itself and is often regarded as one of the worst menu items from Taco Bell. Because of low sales, it would be discontinued shortly thereafter. It wouldn't be until almost 25 years later that Taco Bell would try again with seafood with a limited time release of the Pacific Shrimp Taco, which did receive some positive feedback but didn't have any demand. Moral of the story guys, fast food seafood isn't it cheap. McDonald's just got lucky, otherwise Long John Silver's would be thriving. More whole chips for more whole dips. Tarango's tortilla chips. 
Turingos are basically the tortilla version of Pringles that were released back in 2001 in three flavors. Original, splash of salsa, and hint of pepper jack. Similar to Pringles, they came in a long plastic triangular can that held the chips and were uniform in shape and size. The chips were also a concave shape, so this made it easier for salsa to reach most of the chips. By 2004, Turingos would be discontinued, and by the looks of these, I really think this was just a gimmick. I mean, one thing that the commercials tried to imply was that regular chips like Tostitos always came broken, and yeah, I really couldn't relate. I mean, the only way Tostito chips came broken is if you like sat on them or something. It's so juicy! So if you have a mouth, and I know you do, may I personally recommend Twizzlers! This is honestly not what I had in mind. I was expecting regular sized licorice coated in sour crystals, but uh, whatever. There really isn't a lot of information regarding Twizzler sours, but based on a few blogs, it was bite-sized Twizzlers with a flavored centered and dusted sugar coating. Each bag would contain four flavors, green apple, strawberry, cherry, and blue raspberry. While no info is available on what happened to these candies, it might have been due to low sales, and simply being that sour licorice doesn't sound too satisfying if I'm being honest. Add a splash of color and some crunch. Kissables, Little Hershey's Kisses, chocolate candy in a crunchy candy shell. Because everyone needs a little kiss. Oh my god, these were so good. They need to run these back. Hershey's Kissables were said to be miniature-sized Hershey's Kisses coated in a thick milk chocolate shell. They're basically nipple M&Ms. Many fell in love with the chocolate candy that its outer shell mixed with the Hershey's taste gave this candy a soothing crunch to it. For a brief moment, many actually thought that this could have been a legitimate competitor to M&Ms. Regrettably, that didn't occur, as in 2008, the Hershey company would modify certain recipes to use cheaper ingredients in several of their products, most notably cocoa butter. Cocoa butter, as you may or may not know, is what gives chocolate that melting taste in your mouth. This change would result in Kissables no longer being labeled as milk chocolate due to FDA regulations, causing them to change the label on the wrapper, but not enough for people to notice at first glance. Yet the ones quick to realize noticed that the flavor was off and lacked certain taste compared to the old one. By 2009, Kissables were officially discontinued and replaced with another line of chocolate covered shells named Pieces. New Kisses mini cookies from Hershey's. Crunchy little cookies in the shape you know and love. Back to back with Hershey's Kisses. It honestly seems like in the 2000s, Kisses wanted to be in everything, even NASCAR. There isn't a lot of information to dig up regarding this item, but basically these were Kisses sized chocolate chip cookies that were available in three flavors. Not a lot of reviews for this item exists. The only notable thing I could find was someone claiming them to be tasteless. There's something new shaking at Burger King. Introducing Shake 'em Up Fries. This is nothing special. Shake'em Up Fries were a short-lived menu item marketed for children where you get regular fries, a packet of powdered cheese, and a barf bag. First, you would dump the fries into the barf bag, put the powdered cheese in the bag, and then proceed to shake it like an absolute psycho and enjoy a cheesy covered french fry. Allegedly, it would look like this. The shake'em up fries wouldn't last as they would be removed just a year later. Many who tried it didn't go for seconds and have also mentioned that it left a huge mess afterwards. They said to make it huge! It's supersize! Now you can supersize your McDonald's extra value meal with a supersize order of our golden fries plus a large Coke for just 39 cents more. Is it time to bring back supersize fry? No. No. God, no. This screams everything that was wrong with fast food at the time. The supersize option was a former McDonald's size available between 1987 and 2004, which included a 42 ounce soda cup and a 7 ounce carton of fries. When this item initially made its debut back in 1987, it was originally meant to be a summer only promotion, yet the supersized portions were returned again in 1988 to promote Who Framed Roger Rabbit and once again in 1993 for Jurassic Park. After these promotions were proven successful, McDonald's would make the supersize a full-time option. Yet that would change in 2004 when McDonald's phased the items off the menu. Contrary to popular belief, many come to the conclusion that the 2004 film supersized me with the reason for the extra large option being discontinued. And while well, yeah, that was the final nail in the coffin, according to McDonald's spokesperson Walt Riker, he explicitly states that the phasing out of the supersizing had nothing to do with the film whatsoever, which is honestly a load of bullshit, let's be honest. But rather, the driving force here was menu simplification. Another reason was also due to low sales, as according to the BBC, Supersize only made a fraction of a percent on sales. Considering there have been lawsuits and bad PR surrounding Supersize, along with a new advertising campaign to better focus on healthier eating and portion sizing, the Supersize option was just not worth keeping. Fishy, fishy. Fish, 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 fish,
In early 2012, McDonald's introduced Chicken McBites, bite-sized pieces of popcorn chicken available in regular and spicy in three different sizes. These were really popular amongst consumers, and personally, I had these a lot when they were on the menu, like they really need to bring these back. The following year, McDonald's would then introduce a fish variety of McBites. Yet, according to CBS News, it was reported that fish McBites failed to generate sales, leading to the removal from the menu less than three months later. This theoretically making Fish McBites the shortest lasting menu item ever at McDonald's. Despite having its fans, McDonald's will remove the McBites claiming that it was only offered for a limited time only and was not a permanent menu item. Although Fish McBites lasted a bit, it would have a lasting impact to everyone who was familiar with the commercial of the time. Oh my god, the fact that McDonald's, the world's largest chain, just made the catchiest earworm known to man on a seafood product and it still managed to fail just proves how cursed fast food seafood is. Like, it just cannot catch a break. Get three bites, to the wafer, to the crunch, to the choco cream or no namkeen. Yehi has snacking ka meat a funda. For the 0.3% of viewers who are from India, here we have Cadbury Bites. These were an Indian exclusive snack introduced back in 2004 and were described as quote, tiny wafer pillows with the characteristic Cadbury chocolate filling inside. They came in a variety of flavors such as chocolate, strawberry coffee, and caramel. And throughout the 2000s, Cadbury Bites would be among one of the most popular snacks towards children and adults in India. Despite that, in 2011, they would completely vanish from store shelves. The reason being it's more bizarre than you think. In 2010, Kraft was looking to expand into the Indian market and rather than doing the integral and honest work of building from scratch, Kraft Food would purchase its entry into the market by acquiring Cadbury for $19 billion. This move was seen as controversial just due to the idea that an American company like Kraft just purchased one of the oldest British companies of all time just to push their line of snacks into the country of India, rather than just put focus on what was already popular to consumers. I think what really twisted the knife from this acquisition was the statement issued by Zen CEO Irene Rosenfeld, quote, We have great respect for Cadbury's brands, heritage, and people, and we believe that they would thrive as part of Kraft Foods. And shortly thereafter, Cadbury Bites were dragged behind the barn and shot. New swoops from Hershey's. Irresistible curves that are bending the rules on how to eat chocolate. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, I'll let you be the judge of this one. Just by looking at these, you could obviously tell what these are. Chocolate flavored Pringles. Except they're really not potato chips. They're more like thin wafer cookies in the form of a Pringle, which to me honestly makes them sound more fragile and less filling. Each box of swoops came in a pack of three containing six swoops per container and were available in Hershey's, Reese's, York Peppermint Patty, Almond Joy, and a few limited edition flavors. The product wouldn't really catch on due to a multitude of factors, including its price, the not so eco-friendly packaging, and and the nutritional info, and overall not as satisfying to eat as initially anticipated. I know earlier I mentioned that how frail they look, but I cannot imagine having these stored in a warm summer day. They'd probably all melt and fuse together. New Mars Planets. Mix it up. Shout out to Black Package Food Products, definitely one of my favorite genders out there. Mars Planet were a UK based chocolate candy. There were these chocolate balls that came in three different varieties in one package a nougat center, a caramel center, and a crispy biscuit center, all covered with wafer and milk chocolate. Unfortunately, these chocolates didn't really wow the audience as they would just prefer alternatives such as Rubbles or Maltesers. And by 2007, the product would just disappear from store shelves. These dots indicate an explosive personality. Cinnabers with flavor crystals yeah. may not be suitable for adults. Cinnabers were a cinnamon flavored chewing gum released in 1991 by American Cheekless Dentine brand. The gum was a strategic attempt for Dentine to reclaim its position as the leader for cinnamon flavored gum. As prior to the release of Cinnabers, they were the market leader for cinnamon gum until the advent of Wrigley's Big Red. And so their answer was Cinnaburst. What made them unique compared to the competition was that they were infused with flavored crystals, which gave them a brief distinct crunch along with a hint of extra flavor. This combination of flavor would be loved by some and soon Cinnabers would become a brand of its own coming out in two more varieties, Mintaburst and Fruitaburst, both of which were also meant to take on double mint and juicy fruit. Unfortunately, sales wouldn't catch on, and by the mid to late 1990s, Cinnaburst and its other varieties would disappear from store shelves. While that might have been the end of Cinnaburst, this was just a footnote to a much larger story, as a few years later, American Chiclet's parent company, Warner Lambert, would get acquired by Pfizer in 2000 for $90 billion, an insane amount, even to this day. While I would get into more detail with this, it's just opening up another can of worms, so let's just move on.
Peeps Pepsi was an Easter limited time edition flavor released in 2021, which combined the taste of Pepsi and Marshmallow Peeps. While that might sound disgusting, surprisingly a lot of people left favorable reviews saying that it almost tastes like vanilla Pepsi with the aftertaste of Peeps Marshmallow. Yet I think the only thing that's still stopping me from drinking this is the high sugar content of over 69 grams. Not nice. This would have stopped Peeps and Pepsi from collaborating again, as in 2023, they would once again release Peeps Pepsi as an Easter limited item. Who knows, they might do it again this year. God forbid. You'll find Marshmallow Bugs crawling through crunchy chocolate flavored cereal in New Kellogg's Chocolate Mud and Bugs, part of this complete breakfast. Yo, one swell kid. Nothing bugs you! Mud and Bugs cereal was a Kellogg's cereal based on Disney's The Lion King franchise, which featured Timon and Pumbaa on the cover. The cereal was chocolate flavored and covered in bug shaped marshmallows, which is best described as Cocoa Puffs and Marshmallows. The cereal is nothing more than your typical Disney product tie-in and uh, yeah, that's really about it. I do find it funny that the box had several designs and yet Pomba just stayed motionless on all of them. Like, it, like is he okay? Why don't you move? Why don't you look at me? Are you mad at me? Please, mommy, just tell me. The Betty Crocker Company is best known for making snacks such as fruit roll-ups, gushers, fruit by the foot, and Dunkaroos. And while products like Dunkaroos did make a return after being discontinued, String Thing still remains in the past. The concept for String Thing is actually pretty simple. It was a fruit flavored candy shaped like a shoestring. Go f***ing wild. It would be available in three flavors and come in several shapes like a rocket, a bicycle, or something else. Unfortunately, these would be discontinued by the mid-2000s. Some speculate that this might have been discontinued due to the candy not being as popular compared to other fruit snacks. Probably fruit by the foot. I, I don't know. Is that Skittles bubblegum with all the different flavors? Yep. Can I have some? Nope. Skittles bubblegum. Inflate the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Oh man, I remember Skittles gum. In 2004, Wrigley introduced Skittles Bubblegum, a Skittles flavored and sized gum packaged in a small flip top box. While this may sound like a cool novelty, it came in a time when trends for taste in gum were changing. In this case, it was sugar flavored gum. As indicated by graph data from Quartz.com, bubblegum and other sugar flavored gums experienced a decline in sales and popularity throughout the 2000s, whereas sugar free gum would see a rise in popularity. I'm pretty sure anyone under the age of 30 was plastered by five gum commercials growing up. This changing landscape made it difficult for Skittles gum to thrive in the market, and because of it, led to lackluster sales throughout its time on the shelves. However, to its credit, Skittles gum didn't give up so easily, as it would release a new variety dubbed Extreme Fruit Skittles Bubblegum in 2006. This featured flavors such as blue raspberry, wild cherry, green apple, tangerine, and watermelon. Despite this effort, Skittles gum couldn't withstand market dynamic, and it will ultimately be discontinued in 2007. New drumstick cereal with that familiar ice cream taste. Available for a limited time. Okay, when I first heard the words drumstick cereal, I was like expecting it to be like a bowl of cone tips, but th this is just sad. In the summer of 2019, General Mills released a drumstick inspired cereal in two flavors, mint and classic vanilla. Drumsticks, as you may know, are those vanilla ice cream cones covered in these nuts. So when the idea of drumstick cereal went public, it got people excited. Yet when the product came out, it had a lukewarm response. Just by looking at it, it looks like Golden Grahams and Cocoa Puffs mixed in with some flavored discs that many have said barely resemble any flavor. The cereal was panned by reviewers who thought that the cereal could have done better and it just felt like a quick cash grab for the summer. All in all, the cereal will leave store shelves by the end of the season. Pineapple. This has to be the weirdest McDonald's item ever sold if I'm being real with you. The Hula Burger was the brainchild of Zen owner Ray Kroc. And just getting sidetracked for a second, in part one, I did get some comments where you guys mentioned that I called Ray Kroc the founder. I meant to say owner. I really can't believe I didn't get that fixed in the post-production. But yeah, thanks for that correction. I'm so sorry. Anyways, let's continue. Just from a retrospect, I feel like this was done out of pettiness rather than trying to make a game-breaking menu item. In the 1960s, Ohio franchisee Lou Groen had noticed that his McDonald's restaurant, which was located in a predominantly Catholic area, did not get a lot of business during the time of Lent, a time where Catholics abstained from eating meat on Fridays during Easter season. His solution to the lack of sales led to the creation of the filet fish And while Luth and everyone else thought that this was a brilliant idea, Ray Kroc was against it, stating that he didn't want his restaurant smelling like fish. Ah jeez Ray, I mean I gotta be honest with you, you sell burgers and I don't see McDonald's smelling like a slaughterhouse, but whatever. He had a better idea, pineapple and cheese on a bun. 
Ray decided to put both items on the menu and would see what would perform better. In the end, the filet fish turned out to be the fan favorite, where it would surely become a permanent menu item. As for the hula burger, it would become a footnote of an item that was never meant to be. I know this topic sounded more like the history of the filet fish but you really can't mention one without the other. The trick is mug -a lunch new from Betty Crocker. Three tasty hot dishes you make in a mug. It isn't magic that makes them disappear. <laughs> Mugga lunch, new from Betty Crocker. Okay, but why though? This just looks like shit. I'm just gonna say it out there. MRE pasta looks more appetizing than this. In the 1970s, instant noodle foods were becoming a popular food item, as by this time, cup noodle had just hit the scene in the US. The Betty Crocker company saw the money being made and created their own version of instant noodles, and they would release Muggo Lunch in 1977 in four flavors, mac and cheese, beef noodle, chicken noodle, and spaghetti. The way you would eat it is that you would grab a mug, pour the contents of the package into the mug, pour hot water, and then stir. This almost looks like hot chocolate rather than an instant noodle, which is honestly what makes it less appealing for me. And by the early 80s, Muggle Lunch will be discontinued. This was a raspberry flavored oat cereal with sweet berry marshmallows released in 1972 by General Mills that was described to have a fruit punch taste. Inside the box included prizes such as patches or even toys, just like the Halloween cereals, which were also made by General Mills. These came with a rival counterpart, Sir Grapefellow, which was also basically the same thing, only grape flavor. The mascots on the box were reminiscent of World War I pilots, with Baron von Redberry being a German pilot and Sir Grapefellow being a British pilot. Based on the timeline of when General Mills was releasing these cereals, it was kind of apparent that they were trying to release every flavor cereal known to man, and perhaps these two were just examples of products not selling well. That's my brand. <laughs> OJ's are packed with vitamin C. Part of this complete breakfast. No OJ! No. The delicious orange taste of cereal! Pull them out! Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> Just when you thought cereal flavors couldn't get any more worse, we have Kellogg's with OJ's. Orange flavored cereal that used 10% real orange juice and natural flavor. Yes, real orange juice, because that's what I enjoy putting in my milk. The box featured a cowboy named Joe, who in the commercials runs a cattle of oranges. Unfortunately, the concept of cereal tasting like OJ didn't catch on, and it would be removed after a year in shelves. Cut from whole potatoes, fried to tasty perfection, crispy and fluffy. New Satis Fries from Burger King. Are you satisfied? Satis Fries? More like Satis Fries! <laughs> this joke was used a lot to describe these fries. Back when I was huge on fast food, I'd always prefer Burger King fries over McDonald's. They just had a certain crispy texture that McDonald's didn't. But in 2013, Burger King would try to introduce a new healthier alternative, Satis Fries. These were advertised to contain 40% less fat and 30% less calories than regular Burger King fries. The fries were made in a special batter that allowed it to absorb less oil, and, and I guess the premise of its existence was to have a healthier menu option, I guess? Unsurprisingly, the fries failed to capture the market and would be pulled from almost all of their locations after just one year. One of the reasons being was their price, as regular size status fries were $1.89 compared to the regular fries priced at $1.59. Another reason was I guess no one cared that they were having extra calories with their fries. I mean, it's fast foods. If you were coming in calorie conscious, you'd probably eat elsewhere. From the wild side of 7-Up comes new 7-Up Gold. Wild thing, I think I love you. 7-Up Gold was a short-lived beverage introduced in 1988 and it remains as one of the biggest failures coming from them. This concoction ventured beyond 7-Up's traditional lemon-lime palette, offering a distinct apple cinnamon flavor with a soda-like hue. It also took departure from the caffeine norm of regular 7-Up, infusing a burst of energy into the formula. Despite these bold choices, the beverage was just panned from regular 7-Up drinkers, as it was just a far cry from what they came to love about the normal stuff. The hurried introduction of 7-Up Gold was driven by the success of Cherry 7-Up just a year prior, as they didn't want to lose momentum from the success of it. Rushed into production with minimal testing, the drink struggled to find its footing and would completely be dead on arrival. Even the CEO of 7-Up acknowledged its failure, recognizing the pitfalls of its misaligned branding. 7-Up Gold was projected to capture 1% of the soda market within a year, yet they would fall short, managing to capture a mere 0.1%. Perhaps what adds another layer to its failure is that this was manufactured by the Dr. Pepper company rather than 7-Up themselves, as the two companies merged that same year. By fall of 1988, 7-Up Gold discontinued all advertising and promotions, and the remaining inventory would vanish by early 1989. The story of 7-Up Gold serves as a cautionary tale about rushing products into the market without adequate testing and understanding of consumer expectations. 
Also, a little fun fact for my wrestling aficionados, did you know that 7up Gold used the Trogs version of the Wild Thing to promote the beverage? Which you may know is the song used for AEW star John Moxley. Burger King just turned a Whopper into a burrito. It's the Whopperito, and it's only a Burger King. What happens when you combine a burger and a burrito? A Whopperito is the answer. These Whopperitos launched in 2016, and among its ingredients were cut Whopper meat, melted cheese, and topped with veggies, all covered in a flour tortilla. Don't you crave them? I kind of do. Look, I, I kind of crave one, to be honest. According to Burger King's president, Alex Mikado, he stated that this was done to get people's attention to come into the restaurants. And while being a weird concept, he also stated that it's important for keeping the brand relevant. Which, I, I guess is a fair enough point. People who did try it did have some favorable things to say, as it is not disgusting as it looks. Introducing Vampire Secrets. Ice pops to give you a bloody look. New from Good Humor. Dude, I think 7 year old me would like these. Vampire Secrets were created by Good Humor in 1992 and it was a black cherry flavored ice pop with a center of cherry sauce, which was obviously meant to resemble blood cause, you know, vampires and stuff. Not only did the gooey and delicious center give you the appearance of a real vampire, but it also left a unique sensation in your mouth, which made it a really popular dessert during the Halloween season of that time. While it is unknown what caused these to get discontinued, one post from 2003 suggests that it might have been due to the treat's high sugar content. Stars. Kaboom cereal for me was that cereal I'd always seen in the cereal aisle but just never cared about. This was launched in the late 60s by General Mills and what caught your attention was its circus themed pieces of oat cereal in the shape of smiling faces in various amounts of food coloring, as well as marshmallows in the shape of animals such as lions, bears, and elephants. The cereal also liked to brag about its high nutritional value as it was said to have 100% of the minimum requirements for vitamin and iron. Still a sugary cereal nonetheless, but hey, you got your vitamins. If you're a huge movie nerd, you probably remember this cereal for its appearance in the 2003 film Kill Bill Vol. 1 where Vernetta Green held a gun inside the box and attempted to kill the bride by shooting her, only to subsequently get a knife lodged at her throat. Cool. Over the years, the box would get a few revisions and it wasn't until the mid-2000s where the recipe was changed from an oat cereal to a corn cereal which lowered its popularity until 2010 when General Mills removed the product from all shelves. They never gave a reason why they would do this, but my theory is that the product was starting to look like a product of its time. I guess clowns just aren't as effective in marketing as they were back in the 60s or 70s. For legal reasons, we at Tango will shortly be changing the name of our freaky soda drink to Tango Strange Soda. For all the American viewers watching, Tango is a soft drink brand that is only sold in the UK and Ireland and is similar to stuff like Fanta and Sunkiss. Tango has been around since the 1950s, but in 2003, they would develop, and get ready for this, a strange combination of fruit juice, carbonated water, and milk. And as many of you may be wondering, who would want to mix milk with a soft drink? Exactly. This is probably why it didn't get much fame. The drink was available in two flavors, strange strawberry and odd orange. And while that combination sounds terrible, its time on the shelves were even worse due to legal issues and name changes, which contributed to the company losing a ton of money. When the drink was first announced in late 2002, it was advertised as Strange Freakin' Soda. However, due to the word Freakin' being labeled as mild profanity, it would be changed to Freaky Soda before launch. Yet, just six months after it hit shelves, Tango would get into a legal challenge from a foreign company due to its name. The foreign company in question is alluding to a Spanish company that sells a candy named Freaky Drop, which just leads to another rabbit hole because Freaky Drops are a syringe-shaped candy. More on that later. Shortly thereafter, Freaky Soda was changed to Tango Strange Soda, or as the commercial liked to imply it as Strange Soda. That way, it's just as much fun. Thank you. These were fruit snacks launched in the early 90s and were inspired by the Darkwing Duck and Chippendale Rescue Rangers series that were both in syndication at the time. I wish I could talk more on this, but there's very little info and images online about it, so let's move on. New Yoohoo Diet Chocolate Fudge Soda. At last, the rich taste of chocolate fudge without guilt. Thanks, Yoohoo. In the 1970s, a new type of soda would hit the scene, Diet Chocolate Soda. Starting off this trend was Canfield's Diet Chocolate Fudge Soda, released in 1972. The drink would peak in popularity during the mid-80s when a story by Chicago Tribune columnist Bob Green talked favorably about the Diet Chocolate Fudge Soda, which allowed it to sell hundreds of millions of cans of this drink. Because of this, everybody wanted in on the Diet Chocolate Fudge craze. This is where you Who Diet Chocolate Fudge Soda comes into play. This was marketed as the first Diet Chocolate Soda to have only two calories and promised guilt-free indulgence. Each can was said to smell like chocolate and taste like chocolate, but it was actually 100% artificial 
artificial, so I really don't even know what this is. Not a lot of info regarding this item exists, and it's unclear why these were phased off in the market. Probably legal reasons, maybe. Cheese bites and Dynabites, the next big thing in cheese. And now the hottest thing, new hot bites, jalapeno peppers stuffed with cheddar or cream cheese in a light crispy coating. From the makers of Bagel Bites, we have Dynabites along with Cheese Bites. These were launched by the frozen potato based food brand Orida in 1993 and according to the only source I could find, Supermarket News, these were small potato balls made from Wisconsin cheese, covered in a crispy coating and were available in such flavors such as cheese and pepperoni, broccoli and cheese, nacho, Montre Jack and jalapeno, and cheese bites, which were available in cheddar and Montre Jack flavors. These were discontinued in the late 90s due to McCain Foods, another frozen food company that manufactures frozen potato products, purchasing Orida's food service division for half a billion dollars. As part of the purchase, McCain Foods had the right to the brands Hot Bites, Moores, Golden Crisp, Domini, and most importantly, Dynabites. This will cause Orida to lose the rights to the recipe, and just based on my speculation, I'm assuming Dynabites are now these McCain mashups. I could be wrong, but hey, that's just a theory. A food the Wait, that's copyright infringement. Status quo is not my strength. Double takes more of my thing. I'm Red Bull Simply Cola. All natural, all cola. In 2008, Red Bull took a leap into the cola business and released Red Bull Cola. Keep in mind that this was a Red Bull branded cola, not a cola flavored Red Bull. So the drink did include caffeine and not the components like taurine. Reviews were lukewarm, claiming that it was nothing that would blow your mind away. But speaking of blow, Red Bull will fall into some controversy when the drink was banned in Germany after a sample test conducted by authorities found 0.4 milligrams of cocaine in the drink. In itself, the amount is not harmful as you would need to consume at least 100,000 liters of Red Bull for the cocaine inside to kill you. So while drinking a can does not make you an addict, I'm guessing just having allegations of cocaine in your beverage is just terrible PR. Or is it? Once the German Institute for Risk Assessment declared the product safe in a study, the product will be put back in shelves. Yet by 2011, Red Bull announced that it would discontinue the North American production of the cola and energy shot to refocus efforts on growth on the rapidly expanding energy drink category. To which honestly, looking from a retrospect was a pretty smart decision as today the energy drink market is flooded with so many varieties. Today, Red Bull Cola is sold in a few markets within Europe such as Germany and Austria under the name Organics by Red Bull Simply Cola to better differentiate itself from the energy drink. A bowl of Kellogg cereal, milk, and spoon all in one. So they can make breakfast anytime. Make breakfast easier. Kellogg's Breakfast Mates in the refrigerated section. For the 100 year history of Kellogg's, they've made a lot of mistakes, but this one's undoubtedly their biggest failure. In 1998, Kellogg's launched a print and television advertising campaign that costed them no less than $30 million to promote Breakfast Mates. Based on the commercials, Kellogg's advertised the products as a means for kids to make their own breakfast cereal as their parents slept in. Breakfast mates were designed as this all-in-one contraception that included an individual serving of frosted flakes, frosted mini wheats, fruit loops, or corn flakes in a plastic container that doubled as a bowl, a spoon, and a 4-ounce container of pasteurized low-fat milk. While Breakfast Mate's milk did not require refrigeration, Kellogg's decided to place the product in the refrigerated section of grocery stores. Unfortunately, this product came to an end only a year later due to several factors. The first being that not a lot of consumers liked the concept of non-refrigerated milk, including myself who would just prefer cereal with cold milk. I know this because I had this in the Mojave Desert. It sucks. Due to disappointing sales, the product would be discontinued in August of 1999. In my opinion, I really don't think this is a bad idea. Rather than selling this product to kids, I would probably sell it to the hiker or camper crowd. I'm sure if you replace the Frosted Flakes with like a healthier cereal, it'll probably sell better. I'm gonna rush. It's shocking my mouth. Wow, my head feels old. Now back to the action. Physics yogurt, physify your tongue. Uh, sorry guys, I'll, I'll try to include a trigger warning for gore next time. Physics is best described as carbonated yogurt in extreme flavor. This Xbox copycat came in six flavors. Triple Berry Fusion, Fruit Punch Charge, Strawberry Watermelon Rush, Blue Raspberry Rage, Strawberry Lemonade Jolt, and Wild Cherry Zing. Despite this yogurt coming out in 2006, it had actually been developed in 1983 by Dr. Lynn Ogden, a professor at Brigham Young University. According to Ogden himself, he claims that the idea came from making root beers at parties and he wanted to see what would happen if you mixed yogurt with dried ice. The yogurt was described as a fizzy, tingly taste, but nothing like a soda. More like like fizzy like pop rocks. According to some reviewers, at first it's cool but the novelty just wears off. Luckily Yoplay realized how weird the invention was and I don't think the commercial really did any justice as it just showcased a sentient tongue fighting a physics tube and a kid's head blowing up all in 30 seconds. Introducing a brand new entree option from McDonald's, onion nuggets. Crispy on the outside, bursting with onion flavor on the inside. 
Now available at your local McDonald's family restaurant. Before the arrival of the legendary Chicken McNugget, McDonald's first idea to a nugget came in the idea of an onion nugget. Imagine in another multiverse where this is universally loved. The development towards this product and the one after it is pretty interesting as it tells us a story of how American eating habits are changing. As the public became more aware of cholesterol and heart disease highly present in pork and beef, it started to hurt McDonald's bottom line. As at the time, McDonald's was still a hamburger joint at its core, and they really needed to think of an alternative meat and quick. McDonald's first executive chef, Rene Aran, came up with the solution of onion nuggets. The nuggets would be test marketed in some select markets in 1978, yet they would be pulled after just a year. While Aran was looking for another idea, McDonald's chairman of the time, Fred Turner, suggested to Aran that he should concentrate on developing a chicken-based product. So he took the idea of onion nuggets and applied it to chicken nuggets, thus becoming the Chicken McNugget, and the rest is history. This Halloween, things will get dark. With A1 flavor baked into the bun, things will get deliciously dark at Burger King. Halloween themed food at a fast food restaurant seems like a great idea. However, for, <laughs> however for Burger King, the excitement and anticipation for the Halloween Whopper turned into a load of crap. This goes all the way back to 2015 when it was reported by Food Beast that Burger King had released black burgers with black buns. These were called the Kuro Burger, Diamond and Pearl which had a black bun and condiments. The bun and cheese were colored using bamboo charcoal and the garlic sauce used a squid ink. Users around the internet were like, that's pretty emo. And it wasn't until September of 2015 when Burger King gave Americans the chance to try out a black bun Whopper for the Halloween season. Yet instead of the classic Japanese bamboo charcoal, we Americanized the hell out of it with A1 sauce. Cause what doesn't scream America than a barbecue sauce created in the middle of the Civil War? Right after the Halloween Whopper's release, many complained that the food coloring in the bun caused them to literally defecate green feces, making hashtag green poop take over social media where some people would even share photos of their own shit. I probably need to go to therapy after this. Medical experts later clarified that there was no serious health risk associated with eating the burger. However, people were not happy that the fast food chain had not informed them about the potential effects of the food coloring used in the preparation of the bun. By 2022, Whopper fans had forgotten about the green poop fiasco and launched another Halloween promotion, the return of the ghost pepper Whopper, along with ghost pepper chicken fries. This time, the bun was orange. Ryan, look out! Jesus, you had to be like a psychopath to like conceive this idea. In the summer of 2004, Trolley introduced its new candy, Roadkill Gummy Candies, which were animal carcasses such as snakes, chickens, and squirrels with tire marks on their body. What a nice idea, right? As was obvious, this product received backlash from the likes of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals of New Jersey, claiming that these candies, quote, send the wrong message to children that it's okay to harm animals. The pressure it had received would be effective, and in February of 2005, Kraft Foods would halt production for the product immediately. Kraft Foods spokesperson Larry Bauman said, We take comments from our consumers really seriously, and in hindsight, we understand that this product could be misunderstood. Pretty strange item, if I'm being honest. The Flintstone has been brought to you by Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter six. It tastes good like a cigarette should. Now we come to the most controversial product on the iceberg, candy cigarette. A type of candy introduced in the late 19th century with ingredients including chalky sugar, chewing gum, or chocolate, wrapped in a thin layer of paper, packaged and marketed to resemble a real cigarette. This product contained powdered sugar hidden in a wrapper so you could blow on the cigarette and it would produce a cloud of smoke, similar to tobacco smoke coming out of the other end. For many years, the place of candy cigarettes in the market has been controversial as many critics and parents believe that this type of candy desensitizes children to becoming smokers later in life. This is because the product had marks and logos similar to those of real cigarettes, which made any child who had tried this product feel tempted to try a real one. Because of this, the sale of candy cigarettes has been banned in several countries, although they continue to be manufactured and consumed in many parts of the world such as Japan, Austria, Denmark and Germany, many of these manufacturers now describe these products as candy sticks or chewing gum and just try to avoid any use or resemblance of a real cigarette. Candy cigarettes will meet their fate when the FDA banned them in 2009. While this ban did not apply to the candy itself, they just cannot be labeled or resemble real cigarettes. Okay, okay, okay. I could tolerate a lot of things, guys, okay? I could tolerate pineapple on pizza, but no, this is this is a greater evil right here. 
The Heinz baked pizza was a frozen pizza sold in the UK because where else would you sell this at? It was a regular cheese pizza topped with frozen Heinz baked beans. It was available in cheese, sausage, and meat treats. And while I, along with the majority of Americans, think this looks like shit, many UK citizens called this a childhood staple. But unfortunately, in 2003, the product would be removed from shelves. Since its discontinuation, many have asked Heinz to bring this item back. And in 2019, to celebrate Heinz's 150th anniversary, they will partner up with Deliveroo to release Heinz pizza in cheese, sausage, and a vegan option throughout several UK restaurants in limited quantities. But finally, in 2022, Heinz Baked Beans Pizza will make an indefinite return as it would be part of a new Heinz product line, which included Heinz Beans Burger, Beans Bowl, and Bean Filled Hash Browns. And now these are available at Iceland branded supermarkets. You said there'd be fudgicles, Bart. Where's the fudgicles? First, it's fudge sickle, and I know they're up here. During the 80s and 90s, there seemed to be a trend by making these unappealing sodas such as Hubba Bubba, Yoohoo, Lifesaver Soda, but I think the worst soda overall in my opinion has to be Fudgesicle Chocolate Fudge Soda. A soda released by Lipton in 1990 that was described to be as a liquefied and carbonated version of a Fudgesicle, which sounds just really gross if you think about it. Info on this item is almost non-existent as there was only three photos of this item online, which, which must have implied that the item wasn't available for long. New Cosmopolitan Yogurt. Even we don't know why this exists. Cosmopolitan, as you may know, is a women's magazine that talks about, uh, women's, women's stuff? I don't know. That's pretty much been around since 1886. That's about 137 years. Throughout that entire time, Cosmo has primarily been in the print and entertainment business, but in 1999, they would blindly go into the food business and introduce Cosmopolitan yogurt. The reason for their creation is, well, pretty odd. It was said that according to a survey, 65% of couples use food during lovemaking. That statement alone can really mean a lot of things. It was that statistic alone that was enough for Cosmo to blindly go into the venture with little to no expertise, and after 18 months on the market, the yogurts would be discontinued due to low sales and would be regarded as one of the biggest marketing flops of all time. Other than this being a stupid idea, there was a multitude of factors that led to this item's discontinuation, such as having no marketing, the yogurt being more expensive compared to other brands, and that they was trying to target women of a specific range that just read Cosmo magazine. So really not a lot of potential buyers. Real cheese? Yes, please. Introducing new melty mozzarella sticks at McDonald's. Made with 100% real cheese, served hot. Here we have a short-lived McDonald's menu item that led to an entire class action lawsuit. In January of 2016, McDonald's had launched mozzarella sticks as part of a company-wide shift towards more snacking options. These were released following a test launch in Wisconsin that received positive feedback. However, there must have been some bait and switch because not even a month after its nationwide launch, some users would vent their frustration on social media stating that the mozzarella sticks were hollow and had more air than actual cheese. This immediately angered one California man and would actually take McDonald's to court as part of a $5 million class action lawsuit claiming that McDonald's misled the public by advertising its cheese sticks as being made from real mozzarella cheese. The lead plaintiff of the case, Chris Howe, claims that the sticks were filled with a substance that is composed of starch, which is a violation of the federal standards labeling it as mozzarella cheese. McDonald's would deny the accusation, stating that their mozzarella sticks are made with 100% low moisture part skim mozzarella cheese. On the contrary, they would also state that they believe that the cheese melted out during the baking process in the kitchen and shouldn't have been served. Ah. All in all, this case would be dismissed in October that same year, with the mozzarella sticks also disappearing along with it. Just an overall disaster for this product. They don't feel like gloves at all. They feel like used needles. But this is where I always keep the gloves. Well, maybe if I dig deeper. Nope, just feels like more needles. Oh, now I'm sure this isn't the glove drawer. You thought candy cigarettes were a bad influence. Wait till you see this. Hippie Sippy was a candy imported from Japan by RJ Albert & Sons in 1968. The package contained small round chocolate candies and came in along with a detachable button that would say phrases like Sock it to me, please feed me, and I'll try anything. More controversially, it came in a container shaped like a syringe. I could be wrong, but I think the syringe was meant to grab the candy where you would then suck the candy out of it. Following its release, parents in the FDA condemned the product's existence, claiming that it was promoting drug use in hippie culture to children. Following this, Hippie Sippy would soon disappear from store shelves after less than a year. And due to its rarity and overall culture shock, a container of Hippie Sippy would sell for hundreds of dollars on eBay. You've enjoyed us as a baby. Now you can enjoy us as an adult. Gerber Singles. The whole new way to eat whenever you eat alone. Gerber Singles were a line of gourmet meals for adults that was mushy adult food served in baby food jars. 
and included such flavors such as sweet and sour pork, beef burgundy, and several other disgusting varieties, and was meant to capture singles and college students who found it inconvenient to cook actual food. While this sounds like a random idea that was pulled out of nowhere, there was actually a lot of consideration and reasoning for it. According to the La Crosse Tribune, as the baby boom generation was tapering up around the late 60s and early 70s, sales for Gerber products went down, and with the original customers now growing up and having few children, Gerber was losing money. For context, in 1972, births dropped from 3.2 million compared to 4.2 million in 1960. This shrinking demographic wasn't good for Gerber as it would cause their stock to drop from $53 to $12. Because of that, Gerber was desperate to try anything to diversify, and try anything to diversify they did, introducing Gerber Singles. This was a failure from the very start. The reason for its failure is obvious. People didn't want to eat mushy food out of a baby jar, especially when it's marketed for singles who use the motto, something to eat when you're alone. Honestly, it just sounded like they were trying to attract loners who can't cook. From the makers of Colgate Toothpaste, we're introducing Colgate Beef Lasagna, now available in Optic White and Charcoal. Okay, okay, okay. Before you freak out, this product may or may not be real. While many claim that they have tried this product before, the people over at Colgate Palm Olive say otherwise. And while this is an iceberg video on items that did exist, I thought this would be like the only opportunity I could bring this up, so yeah. It's a confusing story, but I'll try to explain the TLDR in a consumable form. Colgate Palm Olive, as you may know, is that company that's best known for their hygiene products such as toothpaste, dish soaps, deodorants, fabuloso, and typical household essentials, but never have really dipped their toes into the food business, and many just assumed it was like that this entire time. That did come into question when a man by the name of Dr. Samuel West opened the Museum of Failure in Helsingborg, Sweden, and as a temporary exhibit in Los Angeles later that year. This was a museum that featured a large assortment of failed products and services for people to view. One of those items in particular so happened to be a box of what appears to be a Colgate branded frozen lasagna dinner. The story goes that in 1982, Colgate wanted to enter the frozen food business, and because the brand already had a loyal fan base, they thought that smacking the Colgate logo onto anything would work, and so they expanded by launching a line of frozen dinners. Ultimately, many were confused about this product due to the fact that it's f***ing Colgate lasagna. Because of that, Colgate would immediately pull the item away from shelves and would be so embarrassed by this flop that they would remove all mentions of its existence the crisp end wall of frozen foods. And while that is a pretty interesting story, everything I just told you is completely fiction. I know, I'm disappointed. I really wanted this to be real too. Following the viral images that was Colgate lasagna, legal representation would contact the museum stating that Colgate had no recollection of this product ever existing. This just raised the question of whether this was even real. Dr. West states that the box was a mock-up to illustrate a visualization that was based on images they found online, to which even he thinks were mock-ups as well. However, after doing some digging around, it was revealed that in a 1966 issue of a Weekly Digest magazine, that in 1964, Colgate released a line of five frozen products under the label Colgate Kitchen, which included a dried chicken and crab meat entree. This same sentiment was also stated in a 1966 issue of Television Age magazine and adds that this this was part of an attempt for Colgate Palm Olive to expand into the convenient food business, an attempt that got to the testing phase but never any further. Um, yeah, that's pretty much like the best way to sum everything up. I might have missed a few details, but long story short, there is evidence that Colgate once dabbled in food, but confirmation of a beef lasagna remains to be seen. If Lost Media could be a food, this would probably be it. Check it out! It's a John F. Kennedy Pez dispenser! <coughs> Good thing I saw my Bobby Kennedy Pez dispenser. Pez, as you may know, are those Xanax-shaped candies that come in a variety of flavors and colors, and are usually consumed with a Pez dispenser that has hundreds, if not thousands, of designs. While several limited-time flavors have come and gone, one of the most unusual flavors to ever be introduced was a chlorophyll-flavored Pez. Released in the 1960s, this was based on the chemical compound that makes plants green. Why they made this flavor is beyond me, but then again, it was the 60s, so maybe some hardcore hippies enjoyed the taste of flowers. Still, chlorophyll? Really? Snack company Pocky is now pulling off its signature spicy chips from store shelves all across the country. This is after a teenager in Massachusetts reportedly died, according to his family, while trying to complete the quote-unquote one-chip challenge. The Pocky one-chip challenge was a product in store shelves from 2016 to 2023 and is a single black tortilla chip that is coated with Carolina Reaper pepper. The purpose of the challenge was to encourage participants to eat the entire chip and see if they could handle the intense spiciness, basically not die. This was heavily emphasized by its coffin-shaped packaging, which helped it gain popularity on social media, where hashtag one chip challenge would be a viral sensation. While this had been a phenomenon as early as 2016, it would reach new levels with the rise of TikTok. Cowboy gang anyone? Anyone? TikTok's impressionable audience would copy doing the challenge themselves, and unfortunately for some people, it would lead to hospitalizations due to intense stomach pains. 
Things would take a turn for the worse when on September 1st, 2023, it was reported that a 14-year-old boy by the name of Harris Wulaba had passed away after partaking on the One Chip Challenge. The story goes that Harris had consumed the chip and had gone to the school nurse after complaining that he was not feeling well. He would leave school early, however, his condition would continue to get worse until he had stopped breathing. When his parents rushed him to the hospital, he would eventually pass away. Following his death, Packy would issue a statement expressing their condolences towards the family and remind their customers that the product was only intended for adults and not children. They would also voluntarily remove all one chip products from store shelves and offer refunds. The Packy One Chip Challenge has since been discontinued because of this horrific tragedy and overall it's just really sad, like rest in peace Harris and my condolences to the friends and families affected. Last but not least, the Pregnancy Whopper. Burger King wünscht alles Gute zum Muttertag. This has got to be a crime against humanity. There is no way people ate this, right? Oh my god, ew. All jokes aside, this item was a publicity stunt done by Burger King Germany to celebrate Mother's Day. A study conducted of over a thousand women in Germany around the ages of 16 to 45, wait 16, FBI, about their eating habits during pregnancy. Their unique taste will result in the creation of these 9 delicious Burger King burgers such as strawberry ice cream and fries, vanilla ice cream and olives, fried egg and banana, curry worse and fried, is that a f***ing fish? Fish fingers and applesauce, cucumber and jam, cream and gherkins, bratwurst and nut nougat cream, and my personal favorite looking one, pie and beef. You know, I get that pregnant women have cravings, but even this scares me compared to like stoner munchies. These items would be available only at one German Burger King location in Berlin and would be free to both mothers and expecting mothers. While digging around, I really couldn't find any reviews, but there were videos of other YouTubers recreating it for themselves, which gave it less than stellar reviews. Go figure. I will say the strawberry ice cream and fries does look kind of banger though. Well everyone, that was the end of the discontinued food and snacks iceberg. Honestly, this was just an overall fun video to make. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a couple things. I want to do a quick shout out to everyone involved, such as Glenn for making the animated segments, as well as my friend Danielle who did an awesome job improvising the fake commercials. She honestly has an amazing speaking voice and I really think she has a bright future ahead of her. I also want to thank you guys for making it this far into the video. Your support really means a lot, for real for real. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end the rambling here. Thank you for watching everyone. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to help me out financially, there's always my Patreon as well as the super thanks on the bottom. Once again, thank you for watching. My name is Lewis and I am out. Thank you.